way to the headquarters and I wanted to give you a quick message today to give us a really a second look at the 2008 recession. Now all of the indicators, and I shouldn't say all, most of the indicators are looking uh, towards a recession coming up in the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, and so I wanted to actually spend some time this week reviewing what did the last five recessions look like? Okay, what did the last five recessions look like and what caused them and what do we need to know moving forward, okay? And there's some commonalities that you're going to see with each and every one of these recessions that occurred in the past. And if you understand them, you can position yourself differently so that you don't lose money and hopefully make money uh, or you can live in neglect and say, well, this is what everyone else is doing, so I'm gonna do it also. Uh, and that's where you're gonna lose money. It doesn't matter how, how good of a person you are, the economy doesn't care, okay? So 2008, let's take a real quick look back. So in 2008, during that recession, I wanna go ahead and highlight, Americans lost almost, uh, almost $13 trillion. $13 trillion were lost uh, by Americans in 2008 due to the recession. That's a big number, 13 trillion. So the reason why is in 2008, the two primary asset classes that crashed were primary residences and stock accounts, 401ks, mutual funds, those types of things. So in 2008, guess what? If you had a home, you lost money. If you had a 401k or an IRA or a mutual fund, you lost money. Bottom line. And it doesn't matter how well you knew your advisor, it doesn't matter how much you loved the home, it doesn't matter how long you lived there, none of that stuff matters. What matters is that you lost money, okay? Now here's the cause behind 2008, and I wanna point out that there's literally nothing you could have done to change 2008, okay? So banks were loaning money to broke people on interest-only mortgages and introductory rate mortgages, meaning that the mortgages were being loaned out to people who didn't financially qualify, weren't being underwritten and vetted, and basically they were given very low payments on adjustable rates that would actually climb over time or introductory rates, kind of like a 0% credit card that after the term period would go up and somebody would have a higher payment. That's all fine and dandy for like the first year or two, but ultimately if somebody is broke and they were already broke when they started the mortgage payment and the mortgage payment goes up, they're not unbroke all of a sudden. So now they've got somebody that can't pay their mortgage. Okay, and that's very normal. People mix, miss mortgage payments all the time and the bank forecloses. But here's the problem. The bank took these mortgages and they sold them to Wall Street. Okay, so now the bank doesn't own the mortgages. Wall Street does. So if the people default, the bank already got the money out of the mortgage. Wall Street is now holding the buck. Now that's also fine. It's fine for Wall Street to lose money. They do it all the time as well. But it didn't stop there. Wall Street took these mortgages that they knew were toxic, they knew that they were backed by the incomes of broke people, and they packaged them up, they paid for higher ratings from uh, the rating agencies, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, etc., and they packaged them up like they were AAA rated, meaning they were investment grade, and then they sold them to you and I. That's where the problem lies. You and I had no idea. Okay, you and I had no clue that these were crappy mortgages and that these mortgages were going to default and that we would be left holding the buck. Wall Street knew that. Now simultaneously, Wall Street was also selling credit default swaps, which was insurance against these mortgages defaulting. And they were selling them very cheap to private investors who saw this mess because they researched it and they wanted to make a profit off of the mess. You and I did not participate in that because your financial advisor doesn't know anything about that stuff. So when you look at, all right, well, if I was in 2008, if I was an investor, I would have lost money without knowing why or how until it actually happened, okay? And if you look at you know, the, the homeowner standpoint, your home would have went down in value simply as a byproduct of everyone else defaulting and foreclosing and having to foreclose and go to auction and sell at pennies on the dollar. That brings the value of your neighborhood down. So if you wanna make sure you don't lose money, what you can learn is in 2008, if you had most of your money in a primary residence or equity on a primary residence or residential mortgage, uh, you would have lost money. Or if you had a portion, a big portion of your assets in your 401k, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, IRAs, you would have also lost money. And, and that's the trend you can look back on in every single recession. Somebody that had the bulk of their, the majority of their assets in primary, uh, residents and residential homes and in the stock market they lose money every single time like clockwork 
with no exception. Okay, and it's not gonna change all of a sudden. And the reason why is these two asset classes are very susceptible to volatility in the economy and volatility can mean upward volatility and downward volatility. So what that means is when the market goes into a bubble and over inflates, your home will go up in value. Your stocks and mutual funds will go up in value. And if you don't realize that, then you know when it goes down in value, you're gonna think you lost all this money. Well, really you didn't have the money in the first place because the values weren't real, they were in a bubble. That's why it's called a bubble. All right, so if, you, if we look back, if you had those, you would have lost money. Moving forward to the next recession, the same rules still apply. If you're in the market, if you've got a bunch of equity in your home, you're gonna lose money in the next recession. Especially those of you that are trying to pay off your house. I know Dave Ramsey said it's a great idea, and, and it feels good emotionally, but imagine losing 50% of what you just put into your house, or 20% of what you just put into your house, or 30% of what you put into your house. It's like a disappearing savings account. You don't want that. Your home is overvalued. The equity is better used elsewhere. Pull it out or sell it. That's the bottom line on that. So I wanted to share that with you guys really quick, and I do want to share with you in 2008, I've got a couple asset classes that did not lose money. They actually made money. So in 2008, the sacred account, of course, made money. Okay, there was about a 7% dividend in 2008, meaning that you not only didn't lose anything at all, you earned 7%. So imagine earning 7% when everyone else lost. Okay, the other one that I wanna point out to you today is called a life settlement investment. If you were in a life settlement investment in 2008, you actually made double digit returns and you were unaffected by the stock market whatsoever. Imagine, like, imagine, like, going back in time, and imagine you had, you know, in your in your IRA. Imagine you had self-directed it with us, and you had a life settlement investment in there, and everyone else lost 30, 40 percent, and you made 12. That would be ridiculous. Like, that's 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 the benefit of what we do for people. So I want to share that with you on the 2008 recession. Uh, by the way, I do have a free membership site that I'm going to give you access to. Um, it's called jerryfeta.com forward slash recession. There's six modules in this site, okay? And if you registered for this already last week, we did add more to it, so there's another three modules in here. It's completely free, but it goes over two different topics. It goes over uh, you know, how to, how to not lose money in a recession. It goes over the last five recessions in depth. It takes a look at each and every one of those, and then it goes through the exact asset classes that you should put your money in and the asset classes you should avoid based on making money during a recession. So if you want that information, click on the link in the comments. Again, that's jerryfeta.com forward slash recession. Uh, you can set up your, your logins right there on the spot. It's completely free. There's no gimmick, no hassle, no credit card number you've got to enter, no recurring monthly subscription. Uh, I can't iterate how how free the course really is. There's no, you don't have to give us anything. Just set up your profile. Go in, log in immediately, use your course, train on the material. There's six modules. We've got video content, we have eBooks in there, and we also have summary articles for you as well, plus infographics. Uh, so enjoy that. Again, that's jerryfeta.com forward slash recession if you wanna check that out. Thank you again for watching. Make sure that you do like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon.